Hello again, here we are. Uh, today's write it down period in the World War I theme is going to have to do with American entrance into World War I. You need a blank piece of paper. Here we go. Okay, so um, the United States is late getting in this. And the reason why is that the United States of America in the early part of the 20th century had a foreign policy uh, policy called isolationism. And isolationism basically revolved around the United States was going to concentrate on domestic issues first and foremost. And that people from other parts of the world and the issues that they were having, they were just gonna have to deal with them without the United States' help. That, that's the key term right there, isolationism. There are still isolationists in the United States today, by the way, all right? Uh, this was easy for the United States to be this way at the turn of the 20th century, about 119, 120 years ago, whatever you want to call it. Uh, why? Well, look, there's distance is an issue. Uh, it's a long way to Europe, and in these days it's still, uh, you know, it's not like you could fly and be in Europe in uh, half a day at those times. Um, Lindbergh, Charles Lindbergh had not yet flew, flown across uh, the Atlantic Ocean. Speaking of oceans, it was almost like the United States has a moat around it. Uh, many people still consider this one of the greatest benefits uh, to the United States and the USA's ability to be a strong nation. It's very difficult to attack the United States mainland, okay? The United States only has two foreign countries on its borders, whereas a country like Germany, Germany has seven of them, all right? So these types of uh, factoids, Okay? These type of factoids allowed Americans, and American citizens, frankly, were fine with it. The vast majority of them were fine with being isolationists. And so the war breaks out. Talked about that already with you. The United States decides to remain neutral. Now, this wasn't necessarily 100% popular. Uh, I, would, I would argue that the vast majority of people were in favor, of Americans were in favor of remaining neutral. But there was a lot of support for the British and the French. They, they were our... Uh, closest allies at this time. Um, there was a big movement in the United States to support the Germans, frankly, because there have been a lot of German immigrants uh, leading up to the turn of the century as well. Okay, the, the fact is that the United States did send supplies to the Allies. There's no doubt about that. There's lots of stuff getting sent across the sea. There's lots of stuff being sent to the British and the French to help in the war efforts. Okay, this, this happens. Now, does this make the United States neutral? Well, this is a legitimate question and a fair question. Is the United States really neutral if it's sending stuff to one side? Okay, all right. Uh, why, would they, why would we send stuff to the British and the French? Well, they're democratic republics at this time. Both Britain and France are democratic republics. So there's a closer connection with the United States to the British and the French. Germany and Austria-Hungary, these are dictatorships. These are oligarchies. These are, these are nations run by kings and archdukes and kaisers and people like that. The president of the United States at this time was one of the most, uh, is one of the most liberal, progressive presidents in the history of the United States. The progressive movement, which we'll get into later on in this class, uh, points to this guy. The progressives that are running for president in 2020, uh, some of the le hardcore left-wingers, they are Woodrow Wilson uh, minions, okay? Wilson was uh, victorious running for uh, president in 1916, uh, in 1912, and he ran for re-election based on the slogan, he kept us out of the war. That, that was his, uh, that was his, you know, every presidential candidate has a slogan. Uh, it's just the way it, it works. Every presidential candidate has a slogan. His was, he kept us out of the war. And he won handily, frankly, in 1916 because of this. Here's a, uh, I like uh, political buttons. Here's a picture of a political button. War in Europe, peace in America, God bless Wilson. And this is not that big, obviously. This is a picture of it. Um, but this was the idea. But things will change. Two turning points change things around, okay? And these are very important to know, and this will be the sort of the emphasis of why the United States gets in. Number one, 
is this concept of a German policy of something called unrestricted submarine warfare. All right, this is a uh, just as you might imagine. Uh, what here, here we go economics again. Okay, economics again. Uh, just like how uh, just like how Napoleon tried to do it. Uh, the Germans are going to try to blockade Britain to starve out the British. But the Germans have a new weapon. It's called a submarine. Uh, there have been submarines uh, before, but uh, now these things are much more lethal. And the Germans called their submarines U-boats, a term I bet you're familiar with. And uh, basically, their U-boats basically were um, circled around Great Britain. And they said... The Germans openly said, we're gonna fire on any ship trying to reach Great Britain, including non-military ships and ships from neutral, neutral countries. The, the, the Germans made no bones about what they were gonna do. Okay, they, they, they put ads in papers uh, in the United States, they put an ad in the paper in the United States, do not board a non-military ship, even a non-military ship going to Great Britain. Well, on May 7th, 1915, okay, and so the war has been going on for almost a year now, something happens. A big, huge, uh, big, huge ocean liner, a cruise ship called the Lusitania. Okay, now you gotta remember now, this is the, this is the great decade of the, of the ocean liner disasters. The first disaster, of course, is in 1912 when the Titanic sinks. This is the second disaster. The Lusitania is sunk and 1,200 people are killed because a German U-boat shoots one torpedo into the hull of this thing, okay? 128 Americans are dead out of a 1,200, mostly British people. The boat is going from New York to London, basically, okay? Here's the second, uh, let me show you one other thing. <laughs> This is, a, this is a great book. It's called Dead Wake, if you're interested. This is a book that describes the last voyage of the Lusitania and what happens. Excellent book, highly recommend it. Okay? All right, uh, number two is the Zimmerman Note. What the heck is this? So the British said, okay, we have intercepted a telegram from Germany to Mexico, of all people. What the heck is going on here? First of all, who the, heck is a, who the heck is Zimmerman? Zimmerman is basically the, uh, his name was Alfred Vaughn, the Vaughn isn't in there, but that's who he was. This note supposedly was from the German ambassador to Mexico. And what he basically does is he invites Mexico to join the war on the side of the central powers, on the side of Germany, uh, Germany, Austria, Hungary, and Italy. And the Zimmerman, uh, Prime Minister or uh, Ambassador Zimmerman says, if you do this, Mexico, and declare war on the United States, uh, and you occup occupy the United States, the United States does not send troops to Europe, American troops would stay in North America, we promise to help you get back the territories you lost, Mexico, of what are now today called Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. Okay? So the idea behind this note is, no American troops will be going to Europe to fight us Germans if all the American troops are busy fighting the Mexicans over Texas, Arizona, and New Mexico. Okay, all right, now what's the importance of uh, the American entrance? Well, and specifically these two, uh, these two incidents, as you might imagine, that American public opinion is now swayed in the opposite direction against isolationism. The United States uh, citizens are, uh, look, and I can tell you that this is, uh, even this is a cut, you, maybe you notice uh, Wilson is still elected after the Lusitania sinks. But the Zimmerman note, you know, people were mad about the Lusitania in America. Uh, but the Zimmerman note tips it, okay? And American troops arrive in Europe in late 1917 and early 1918. And really, their numbers sort of, and remember what I told you about, uh, remember what I told you about trench warfare? The side that is going to win in a trench warfare fight is going to be the side with the most troops. And so even the Germans, uh, and, and I, I've argued to you that these uh, leaders of both sides were foolish and didn't understand tactics and weren't very clever, 
But even the Germans were starting to understand that if, if uh, this is going to be a war based on who has the most troops. And if American troops arrive, we're going to be in trouble. And so, well, sure enough, that's exactly what happened. Okay? The Americans were led by a man named John Pershing. Um, he led something called the AEF. Here's a little uh, acronym for you to rem uh, remember. It stands for the American Expeditionary Force. Okay? Uh, his nickname was Blackjack Pershing. Uh, he was, by all accounts, a very gruff and tough and loud man and didn't take any baloney from anybody, shall we say. Now, the British and the French are ecstatic, as you might imagine, because the British and French say, all right, let's put those uh, Americans right into the trenches. And more or less, Pershing said, uh, no, we are not going to do that. We Americans are not going to be commanded. We are Americans. We are going to be commanded by American officers. We are not going to be commanded by British and French officers. And generally, Pershing said, we are not going into the trenches. Now, some Americans did, don't get me wrong. Some Americans did go in the trenches. But generally, they tried to stay out of them. Okay? Now, there's a reason why. There's a reason why the Americans wanted to stay out of the trenches. And the reason is... Oh! I guess you'll have to stick around and stick around modern world history to find out for yourself the reason. Okay? Well, in the grand scheme of things, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this was pretty brutal. Um, we're only there for 11 months. Okay? Uh, not very long. It's not very long that we're there, but the casualties are bad. 10,000 troops a month are killed. 2,000 troops about a month. Uh, excuse me. Uh, 22,000 troops a month are wounded. So 10,000 dead. This is, this is bad. It's not very long. And look, that this should give you, even the Americans trying to stay out of the trenches, this is bad. Okay, so what's the ironies? What is the ironies of the American entrance into World War I? Well, number one, guess what? And you're going to read an article about this. The Lusitania was carrying weapons. Uh, there's a lot of discussion about a second explosion. The, there's no doubt that the Germans only fired one uh, torpedo, but there was a second explosion. So what was the second thing that exploded? Did the torpedo ignite the weapons in the hull of the Lusitania? And they found bullets all over the floor of the of the sea where it is sunk. Okay, so even though uh, it was a neutral ship, okay, even though it was a neutral ship, it was still carrying weapons. Secondly, some claim that the Zimmerman note was just a big fat fake, uh, and that it was a forgery that the British came up with to get the United States to join the war. Okay. All right. Now I'll just show you uh, two other things. This is a famous. Um, painting, okay? This is a famous painting, uh, and this is uh, a painting by Bernard F. Gribble, and it's called, check this out, this is called The Return of the Mayflower, and of course, uh, you all know that the Mayflower was English citizens who moved to North America. Uh, this is uh, American troops arriving in American military ships, and you can see there's some British citizens over here pumping their fists and being excited as these ships arrive. One of them is the USS Wadsworth, and one of them is the USS Porter. Okay? The return of the Mayflower. I also recommend to you, you ought to take a look at this song right here. Just YouTube this song, sing along. It's called a song called Over There, and that's what it was called. Americans said, we're going over there, and the implication is um, America is going over there to uh, get the job done. Johnny, get your gun, get your gun. Johnny, show the hun, you're a son of a gun. Hoist the flag, let her fly, Yankee doodle, do or die. Okay, so look this up on YouTube and just listen to the uh, lyrics. It's a great song um, from the time period. Okay, all right, that's it, everybody. Very good, thank you very much. Hope you enjoyed the discussion. That'll be it for today. And remember, even though I'm not here, I'm still here. Okay, have a good one. Bye.